It was later in the afternoon, and the detective arrived at the town's medical examiner's facility, a sterile and harshly lit place that he had made similar trips to before in recent weeks, and for the same reason. By the time he'd arrived, the morgue technician who was in charge of the autopsy had already completed the grim task of making the examination of the body. This information was according to the phone conversation between the tech and the detective earlier. He'd had a somewhat reasonable, if not disturbing, assessment for the cause of death. As the detective navigated through a maze of hallways with highly polished sheet vinyl floors, he finally arrived at the elevator which would carry him to the lower level of the facility. There, he would hopefully find something he could use in his case. The stress on his mind was palpable, and it was his hope that the morgue tech would speak words to give him even a little bit more confidence and knowledge. When the elevator reached the morgue level, the detective was met with the uncomfortable chill that pervaded the place. He was instantly overcome with a feeling of dread and wondered how or why anyone would voluntarily work in such a place. This place wasn't as brightly lit as the upper levels of the building. Large industrial stainless steel sinks sounded with echoing drips as the faucets leaked and a vast row of gurneys in a line along one of the walls held the bodies of the dead that were covered with sheets. The detective observed the morbid sight of their tagged toes protruding from their coverings. He grimaced slightly as he remembered the crime scene earlier. After a few minutes, a bearded and disheveled looking man in a stained, unzipped lab coat approached the detective with both a smile and a pleasant greeting. He was clearly having his lunch as he held a sizable cheeseburger in one hand as he shook the detectives with the other. Ketchup and special sauce dribbed down his beard just under his mouth, and he lazily wiped at it with the heel of his hand. After the salutations between himself and the detective, he ushered the detective into a small examination room where the latest victim was laying on a gurney and still covered with a blood-stained sheet. His explanation and hypothesis was brief yet thorough. He continued to nibble away at his cheeseburger indifferently as he spoke. Definitely an animal attack of some sort. I wouldn't rule out a bear, although I'm not really familiar with there ever having been aggressive bear attacks in this area before. But stranger things have happened, I guess. As you can see, these lacerations at the throat through the upper thorax indicate that this was clearly not done with a weapon. These were done with claws. Bears? I don't think I recall a time that bears ever acted out like this, with this kind of brutality, or anything like this in this area before. It's not unheard of for a bear to act with this kind of aggression towards someone if they're protecting their young or if they're extremely hungry. It's a rare occasion, but it does happen. I will say, however, the abnormal amount of additional predation beyond the trauma is strange. And of course, making the positive idea of the victim is going to be hard to do as well. Yes, the violence seems to be escalating. Of all the previous victims, this seems to be the one that's had the most brutality inflicted on it. This is the cop's worst nightmare. There's nothing worse than trying to figure out why people are getting killed over fucked up reasons. The chill in this place was persistent and unchanged. After the visit to the morgue, the detective was arriving home where his daughter, Nev, had been doing some cleanup in the kitchen. He came in and took his coat off and draped it on the back of one of the bar chairs. He placed his keys on the breakfast bar, and Nev noticed a disturbed and darkly fitting look on his face. She was hoping that his day was over and that he could relax. His plan was indeed to relax, but he wasn't going to be able to sit for long. His plan was to pour a nice, stiff knock of bourbon, sit in his study, and think for a little while before resuming his continued investigation. There's no way that he was going to be able to fully relax knowing that there was a complete psycho roaming free in town and creating a growing collection of mangled victims. It just wasn't going to be able to happen. 
but he needed something to deal with the trouble at hand. Hi, Dad. Are you in for the night? No, babe. I just wanted to stop by for a few minutes before I head out again. Daddy, please be careful. I will. Say, I've got something I've been meaning to ask you about. Raimi, is she still seeing that new guy still? She's still seeing him, against my objection. You're going walking this evening, she said. Brock is his name? How well do you know him? What kind of guy would you say he is? I don't know him well at all, and really don't care to. He gives me the creeps. I mean, there's just something wrong about him. Having tended to what she needed to, Ramey eventually arrived at Nev's house. As she pulled into her driveway, she saw that Nev was standing in the opened front doorway as if she knew when Ramey was going to arrive and anticipated it. She noticed that Nev had an expectant smile on her face, but also noticed that it looked like something was going on behind her eyes, something dark and worrisome. This seemed to add to Raimi's irritation. She wondered if there had been something that had happened when she wasn't looking in the brief time that Brock had been introduced to Nev. Otherwise, why would she be acting so nervously and overly protective? It was going to end today, she'd be bound. But at the same time, she wanted to be an adult about it. Therefore, she'd try to soft-handle the situation as much as possible. No sense in getting Nev even more unreasonably upset than she already seemed to be. Raimi walked up to the door where Nev stood, still smiling, and the two embraced. They both went inside, and Nev made drinks for the both of them. A short while went on, and the two discussed Nev's heavy-hearted concern. She handed Raimi a newspaper with the headline folded to be all that was visible. Raimi grabbed the folded newspaper with an agitated jerk and read it. Nev reinforced her concerns with the headline being the affirmation of her case. Do you ever remember anything like this happening around here before he got here? Okay, Nev, I get it. You don't like him. But I'm not going to sit here and accuse him of being the son of Sam. He doesn't give me that impression at all. Where are these bad vibes coming from with you? <sighs> Look, sweetie, I'm not trying to piss you off. I'm just saying be careful, please. Some people might not be what they seem. It'll be okay, chick. Stop worrying, okay? The discussion was over, or at least it seemed to be, and the two of them held their hands in one another's and gave each other assured and friendly smiles. It should be cleared up and okay now. At about the time things were cooling off between the two of them, Nev's dad, the detective, had walked out of the study where he'd been drinking his bourbon previously. He continued to look at the two of them as they watched him silently. Something had clearly been going on, he thought. Nev got up from the couch and started to make more drinks. Little did Ramey know that the feelings of concern weren't just confined to Nev, but that the detective had them as well. 